Hey there, it's Huang with Hand Therapy Secrets. This episode of my show, we are going to be talking with Susan Weiss. Now, I've known her from afar for so long, but here I get to connect with her and talk to her about how she developed the Purple Book. Now, if you're an OT, you're a PT, anyone who is studying to become a certified hand therapist has to know about her book, The Purple Book. And this is me talking to her about her journey as an OT CHT, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. So welcome, Susan. I'm so excited to have you here. This is Susan Weiss of um, Exploring Hand Therapy. Did I say that correct? You correctly? did. Thank Exploring you. Exploring Hand Therapy. But I feel like um, you've done so much more. D didn't you have another company or is it the treatment to go treatment to go is a part of exploring hand therapy. So it's a DBA, which we okay. can discuss that later if you want, but mm -hmm. uh, you know what that is, but some of the listeners might not be familiar with it, but we did treatment to go as a DBA. So we could reach some of the generalists and not just hand therapists. So that's why oh. it's exploring hand therapy and DBA treatment to go. Oh, okay. And then we have live conferences as well as our streaming platform. Okay, awesome. So tell tell me a little bit more. Like I've always known you when I was in uh, when I came out of school and I started wanting to become a certified hand therapist. I, you know, your name is like one of the first names that I heard, and I think that your name is one of the names that most people hear when they think about becoming a certified hand therapist. Um, you are like the author of the most famous <laughs> CHT, you know, uh, prep book. Can you tell us a little bit about like how all this started, your journey to becoming a hand therapist and eventually becoming one of the most popular um, authors around when it comes to hand therapy? Well, that's an awful lot of credit. Thank you. Very, <laughs> very, very sweet. But uh, the story is pretty simple. So I went to school at University of Florida. So we are Go Gators, Go Gators <laughs> together. And I graduated in 1990 in the olden days, like when you guys were in diapers. So anyhow, you know, I was right after you. You were? I started there. Well, okay. So I started in 94. Okay. Yeah. I started so not in too far. Not, not too, too far. Okay. Started in 94. And then I got my, my master's in 2000. So very cool. But yeah. Well, I graduated in 90 and I knew I was going to do hands right from the beginning. I yeah. had seen a hand therapist at a hospital and I was like, okay, that's what I want to be. It was at a, a, a high school tour that we had. It was in a, this program called Medical Explorers. And I knew right away, okay, that's what I want to be. She was, you know, doing hand therapy. I'm like, this is really awesome. That's what I want to be when I grow up. And I knew you could that do was it. Like you was it. had a wavering. Nope. I did have a wavering of what, what do, should I be an OT or PT? Because they said you could be an OT or PT and be this yeah. hand therapist. Cause that, yeah. I didn't really care. Honestly, at the time yeah. I was like, whatever's easier. So after realizing I'd have to take physics, I immediately <laughs> ruled out PT. So OT it was. So then, then they say, well, it's really hard to get into OT school. I'm like, Oh, oh why did I pick OT? It's going to be really hard. I'm not that smart. I'm never going to be able to do it. And I'm like, okay, just wrap your mind around it and you better apply to every single school that has OT. And at the time there was only about 26 schools, I think. And yeah. I applied to them all because they said it's really, really hard. Yeah. I know wow. it was all by paper. You had to, you know, write everything and send it all in by hand. There was no, it was before the internet really. You know, Me so. too. Yeah. So anyhow, I sent them all the applications in and I got in all but Tufts. So I was like, Oh, darn. I really wanted wow. to go to Tufts. I was so, no, I was honestly, I was so shocked. I, I couldn't believe it, but being a Floridian and being Floridian, I'm like, oh, I'll stick with Florida. So Florida it was, didn't bad an eye, went off to Florida and knew right away. I just wanted to do hand therapy. And so of course we had the six week specialty internship, which I did hand therapy. And, right. and when I was graduating, they had said there was going to be this CHT thing. It had just started. So it wasn't even, you know, totally done it with the first year was 1990 I think or 89 so it was it was like super great timing I'm like oh yeah I can do the CHT thing and then we found out that you had to wait five years before mm -hmm. you could take the test yeah so 
when we went to study, we, you know, we didn't, there was only ASHT and then there was no HTCC yet. And so we didn't know what to do. We didn't know what to study. There was no guidelines, nothing. So it was really stressful because I felt like, oh, there's nothing to study from. What are we going to do? So my study partners and I wrote questions for each other. And that's how we studied. We wrote tons and tons of questions for each other. And we asked the surgeons that we worked for to give us quizzes all the time. So it was constantly being quizzed, 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 quizzed on my questions wow. every single day, getting questions to try and learn this, this stuff. So yeah. that was kind of the idea. So when, when I said, okay, if I ever do get fortunate enough to pass this exam, I'm going to write a book with lots of questions in it because if I pass, that means that the question thing worked and I was fortunate enough to pass and the purple book came out first edition was with Elsevier and it was extremely well received and people loved it. And then it just kept growing and more and more people were contributing and providing information and sharing, you know, great tidbits on, you know, hands and upper extremity. So that was the basic story of how the purple book came along. And then wow. as, you know, as that developed, we came up with the practice exams and other study modules. So our primary, you know, source of providing information to people was with materials to help prepare for the exam. And mm -hmm. then as that grew, we had people asking for other materials and courses for beginners, intermediate, advanced. So we have over 200 courses that are. You have a ton of courses. A yeah. Ton of courses. You have a it's, ton of it's... courses. Let me ask you, what is your most popular course that people purchase from you? We have two most popular. The most popular CH is our CHT prep bundle because it comes with so much and it's a really good price and it has mm -hmm. access to a great study modules, which has 20 courses and it also has three practice exams with it. So it has a nice array of materials. So that's the one of our best sellers. And then our physical agent modalities is also an extremely oh, popular yes. course. Sure. You know, because, you know, like in Florida, we don't, when we graduate, we're not physical agent certified. So we have to get so extra funny. hours. It is. And so we developed that so, course a long I time ago. The schools don't just add it in. I remember yes. that being such a huge thing when I came out of school and I was like, I want to become a hand therapist. No one would hire me because I didn't have skills, but I'm like, how do I get skills if I don't get a job in it? And um, I'm in Miami. So I stayed, I came back to Miami after graduating from UF as well. And I would look in the newspaper back then. It wasn't <laughs> the only thing online was like monster.com right <laughs> to look for dogs but you're still going through a newspaper and like circling okay you know where can I and I would call the shadiest places Susan you don't even know half the interviews and the places I called so because they would say that they were looking for a hand therapist or they're looking for an occupational therapist and I would go to some of the shadiest place and even in those places, they were like, do you have a physical agent mortality certification? They still, like, they still asked, right? <laughs> I'm like, what? I have to have what? So yeah, for the long, so I was like, okay, that's going to be my first class I purchase, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. so I can do ultrasound and East Stem and all these other things. Yeah, and it's and not even that you my well, opinions on. <laughs> well, I, it's a funny thing that you said, it's like, I'm like the least, I've always been the least user of modalities in any clinic I've ever been in. I'm like a super, I'm a super hands-on, like breathing, yeah. holistic, like, like let's do mindset it, and, and the power of, you know, just the way we are, our energies and stuff, yeah. and have these great abilities to heal. And yeah. so I, I didn't really want to do it, but you really yeah. have to have it. And there's so many states that require the it. The public so. wanted you to create something. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I was fortunate enough to, I couldn't teach that course if I tried, honestly. It's oh just my so, God, someone. It's so over my skill set, honestly. And so, you uh, can't teach I, things you don't believe in, though. You really can't. That's true. You can't teach that's things true. you, I mean, like you already said it, it's not your favorite thing to do. So, I mean, it'd be that's like true. really, you know, you that's would true. not so, be convincing. Please use true. ultrasound. I think if you, <laughs> like, you know, I, hate ultrasound. People are like, oh, well, you ultra ultrasound? I'm like, no, listen, I know the protocol book says you can start using ultrasound. It says you can start using it, but that doesn't mean you have to use it. <laughs> 
so many go. other things to do. Uh, why would I want to waste 10 minutes? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's such a limit of the time you have and the ability yeah. to, you know, perform stuff with your clients. Yeah. So you do have to pick and choose. And, and I was fortunate enough to have Paul Bonzani as one of my educators and he's a, he's brilliant with the modality. So yeah. he's, he's he that probably loves it. So he could teach it well. He does. Yes. He does. You got it. You got to really love it. I do. And I have, that's why I have such a huge array of educators because, you know, I'm not the, you know, top of the yeah. line educator on every single topic. There's some topics yeah. that I love yeah. and there's some topics that I don't love, but there's so many topics out there that people want to learn about. So, yeah. but you're the, you're, you're such a, the curator. So you're like, I like you. I like you. I think you <laughs> teach this stuff. You know, yeah, let's come on. That that's great. What a great business model. Yeah, it's you know? been a lot of fun. It's been yeah. a, you know, a lot of years. And part of the How long has it been, Susan? How long has it been? Well, I really went into hands right away and I've always worked I've been surgeon trained and worked with hand surgeons direct. So I looked at the idea of starting my own clinic, which I never did. I thought it would be very interesting, but after looking into that avenue, I thought I really wanted to go into education because I loved teaching. And I, so I was teaching for a lot of companies and going, traveling all over the world. And it was a lot of fun. And I loved doing it. I was teaching splinting, advanced splinting, and yeah. just an, an array of stuff. And it was great. And I really loved doing it. But then I had a child and the thought of leaving this little tiny human by itself was not that appealing. And yeah. I was nursing and this nursing thing was interfering with, you know, work and traveling. Yeah. So I wasn't quite sure how to deal with that. So I thought, hmm, let's make a video of some of the stuff we teach. So back then we made a VHS. Remember what those are? Yes, yeah. I do. So I and how VHS mine like two years ago. <laughs> so I made a VHS Hang and, <laughs> and that's I started selling VHS like, and we did before it was vogue to do this kind of stuff. We actually did live stuff on the internet when the internet first started. And I mean, I was awesome. pregnant with them and just like yeah. over, over the time it was, it was pretty cool. So we were doing live stuff before live was cool. And, and we, then we did VHS and then we switched to CDs and then we went to DVDs and now we just do solely online. So we've kind of evolved, you know, the business model as, as sure. things changed. So what was the question? Did I miss you? Did I miss what no, your question you did. was? Yeah, okay. no, you got it. You got it. I so I wanted sometimes. to ask, Sorry. Well, as a CHT, because you said that you, um, you are surgeon trained, you worked with surgeons for quite a while and stuff like that. What would you say that you are quote unquote famous for? Like, what are you really good at? Um, and can you share what that is for those that are watching? I, you know, I don't know if I would say I'm famous for anything. I think, I, I think you're right. In your mind, I, in your mind, in you're mind. famous. <laughs> Susan <my> famous. Mind, <laughs> I'm a little bit shy, but I, I, I honestly, what my favorite stuff to treat in the clinic was really bad trauma. So that was my favorite thing because I, I, I worked for surgeons. So I was able to go to the surgeries with them and they call me. Like, yeah come to the surgery suite. We got this great, you know, ridiculous spaghetti arm. And so I'd race over there. It didn't matter what I was doing unless yeah. I was nursing. And yeah. then, that's when I kind of changed my whole system, but that I would race over there and, you know, be with them in the surgery. I'd see the tension on the repairs and then we would decide, you know, what are we going to do? How are we going to treat this patient? And then yeah. we'd start the therapy, you know, based on what we actually did in the OR, even though I wasn't doing anything, I was privileged to have that yes. opportunity with the surgeon. So that's, what I guess I would say I would, if you said that I'm famous for, I, I'm famous for making sure I'm really involved with whatever cases that came up. Yeah. And, and I love that. It was such a great experience and I loved being surgeon trained and it was just a, a great way to learn for me. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's most, uh, say she's dream, you know, oh, it is. she, I want to be this hand therapist. You know, and it's that idea of like, you're seeing these traumas, you're working with a surgeon and they're going back and forth with you. And um, definitely one of the, the, the areas of hand therapy, it's not the only area. So like, that's my thing. It's like, I, I want to teach other people that there's more than just that, right? right, right. Because 
there is that and that is exciting um and it is fun to be collaborative but not everyone has that opportunity and not all opportunities last forever right right so when we talk about longevity of career and stuff you you had that which set your foundation to allow you to really be able to do what you do right now which is be the um, curator of all courses having to do with hand therapy and helping OTs become CHGs. Yeah. Right. I've been, you know, I was very fortunate with having that opportunity with hand surgeons. And that's why I really did consider, you know, at, at some point, you know, I'd like to have a clinic because I loved it. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I didn't want to work for somebody forever. Yeah. So I really yes. wanted to have my own business and and it sounded like a really good idea to have my own clinic. And I'm like, I just don't know if that would work for me with what I've done because I, I was yes. really spoiled, you know, yes. I, and <laughs> I, I didn't really necessarily want to have, you know, hundreds of different referral sources coming in where I'd have yes. to, I didn't really like the kind of the ones that would come from outside that were misdiagnosed, which I'm sure you get plenty. And, and, and I just felt like I'm too mouthy for that. I wouldn't be able to be, appropriate and deal with the, them <laughs> appropriately. And I was thinking, this is not going to work for me. So if I get a whole bunch of misdiagnoses, it's going to be hard for me to bite my tongue. And so yeah. because I was working with surgeons, I didn't get too many outside referrals, but when I did yeah. and they yeah. were not like perfectly diagnosed, then I was frustrated because I couldn't really yeah. say anything or I didn't know yeah. how. I or didn't know surgery how. themselves were not so great, right? <laughs> or the wrong surgeries. You'd be like, they had a bilateral carpal tunnel and didn't even have carpal tunnel based on what I saw. So it was, I was thinking, yeah. no, I, it's just not gonna, that wouldn't be for me. So that's why I was like, what other areas could I go into? And then yeah. book came and then from the book, the courses and the teaching and, and yeah. it was just, it, it just kind of fell into its place. In, yeah. into and that voila, direction. you Here have this amazing life. Oh, and uh, I have four children. <laughs> Don't forget that. So yeah, that well, like, you that, know, they'll grow up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have 28 year olds. Yeah. 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 Wow. They are. Yeah. It's going to take you a little while. <laughs> a little while. Yeah. Twins at 43. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So that's, um, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So I was going to ask you one other thing. It seems like a lot of people are looking to prepare for the next exam. If there was only one piece of advice, one piece of advice you could give an occupational therapist to help them pass boards, what would that be? Well, I do get a lot of calls and I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one training with therapist studying. And the biggest piece of advice, I think, of all the things that we talk about, because I talk a lot just like you do, and it's great talking to you. I think the most important piece is to, to let them know that to be confident and don't let the fear overtake them because people are like, oh, it's a really hard exam. It has a really, it's got a really low pass rate and they get themselves very freaked out before they even start the journey. So I kind of try and wash that out from the beginning. Like, let's start with, I'm ready to take this exam, you know, whether it's a year or two years, whatever it is, yeah. let's make a plan. So the biggest one piece I say is don't go in at it. Like this is really hard and I'm going to make it really hard. Just go in at it with, I can do this. I'm confident. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do the things that it's going to take to get me where I need to be. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I say the same thing, confidence. Um, it's that second guessing. But really, um, one of the biggest things I hear too is the overwhelm, right? Right. You, the overwhelm. And I just, I'm about to release a video about that. Um, awesome how to really minimize that overwhelm. And the reason why people think it's so overwhelming is because they, they, they get too far ahead of themselves. This is true. You know, they get like, oh my gosh, like everybody fails, no, not everyone fails. You know, um, there's so much to read. You just gotta start with, start with you know. So one of my, my biggest um, advice is to create a habit. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to talk more about that in one of the videos. I think I made it already. I think I'm going to post it pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, that, so, that's brilliant. I'm looking yeah. forward to that because it does, you know, it's great that you have all these resources that we're able to refer to each other and facilitate growth with these, with the therapists yeah. wanting to get into our field because we need lots of great 
therapists and we do know, adding CHT to their title just gives them even more confidence that it does. they're doing a great job. And, you know, yeah. I tell people don't, don't get too worked up. You know, it's, it, it is just a test and just yeah. relax and, you know, put your hands in it, get, get into it. You got to get a little dirty. You got to go in the OR or go and, you know, volunteer somewhere. And, yeah. and if you volunteer somewhere and you miss questions and don't get it right, those are what, those are the things you're really going to remember later. I mean, I still <laughs> remember some of the questions I got wrong and, you know, 20 years ago and, I, and it, it, it sticks with you because you're like, Ooh, how did I even say that? That was really embarrassing, but it's okay. So just, you know, knowing, you know, if you can find a place to volunteer, if you don't, if you're not in it fully, which a lot of people aren't and they want to be, but it's hard because they run into the, the quandary of they can't find a job in hands because they, nobody wants to hire them because they don't have yeah. their CHT. Right. And so they find it hard to get a job in hand. So they dabble a little bit, but it's not enough because a, not. a lot of the stuff it's, it is really hard to read it and understand it no matter what, even watching a video, it, it's, yeah. you just kind of have to touch it, feel it, or be in it, you know, yeah. observing it really up close. So yeah. I think that there's, there's a lot of practitioners that are so willing to share, whether it's the surgeons yeah. or therapists, you might have to drive a little because maybe they're afraid that you might take over their practice yeah. or something. I'm not sure, well, but I think a, a lot of times nowadays there ha a lot has to do with the fact that time is a factor. It's true. Time is a factor. It's not 20 years ago. I'm not even 20 years ago because I've been practicing for 20 years longer than that. Um, the way we practice as um, therapists was different or that, that mindset, the mentality, reimbursement, insurance, all that good stuff was right. very different. And time has everything to do with it. So nowadays it's so difficult um, to give that amount of time. I mean, people are willing to share. I share a ton of stuff. You share a ton of stuff. I know uh, lots of therapists, Facebook groups and stuff like that, but you have the sharing and then you have the oversharing, right? right? So you have so much information that people can't decide. And that was my biggest thing for creating the hand therapy mentorship program. Mm -hmm. It's literally for someone who doesn't have anyone to mentor them. It's literally for that person who can't get that job because they don't have experience and can't get that experience because they can't get that job. And it's, this is where we can work with someone to, to get them some skills, to get them some experience, to get them the thinking process, right? So they can confidently go in and get certain jobs that will get them to get those other jobs that will eventually lead to the kind of job that they want. You know, some people love hand therapy, but don't necessarily want to do the, the most complex cases, right? Mm -hmm. um, and some really want to be the ones working next to the surgeons and all that stuff. So, but it's, it's so great about OT. It's so many different ways that you can do it. Are you, I always say, well, thank God, majority of people have two hands and two arms. You could help them in any setting. Mm -hmm. You can be a hand therapist in any setting. Like all the people who work in adults, you got somebody in there with arms. I know you do. <laughs> you can practice. <laughs> Somebody's got arthritis. <laughs> and don't discount them just because it's arthritis. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Don't point. discount them. They have pain. They want to be able to move. They want to be able to use their arms. Just because they didn't have a flexor tendon doesn't mean that they don't deserve someone who knows how to help them. I actually spoke to someone and like, I've been getting a lot of people requesting to speak to me and they're from different countries. It's incredible. I was talking to someone last week. They told me the same exact words that you just said. Well, they come out of school and they can't get a job because they have no experience, but they can't get the experience because they can't get the job. The guy literally told me that and he lives in a whole nother country. Wow. And I told him, I was like, holy shit. Like you are literally telling me right now from another country the same things that people who come to my clinic applying for my jobs and emailing me and from the united states they're all saying the same thing it's really incredible you know so um so i think that there's a space to you know in lots of different realms to to be able to help therapists so that they can get more experience they can develop their 
problem solving and critical thinking skills, you know, get that learning and then apply it so they mm -hmm. can eventually get a job like you did inside a hand surgeon's office. <laughs> Cool. Real cool. <laughs> well, Susan, thank you so much for coming on and talking to me. Um, can you tell people where they could go to find your books and your courses? Yeah, first of all, thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. It was, it was a great pleasure to, to actually have this lovely chat, and I look forward to continuing to grow our businesses together because we're all on the same team. So it's super awesome to connect this way and thank you we've spoken time. several times but this is the first time we're meeting <laughs> i know i know it's really awesome i love it cheers 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 yeah love it so thank you i know when you say cheers you have to take a sip right you do it's, it's, a it's bad luck when you don't <laughs> <laughs> that's true there you go i'm and very superstitious to... okay so we you know we can cheers many times you want <laughs> And we don't have to disclose what we were drinking. <clears throat> Just saying. Absolutely not. It's my coffee mug. That's right. <laughs> I, can, I think I smell that coffee breath. <clears throat> Just saying. <laughs> Anyhow, you guys can all reach me at handtherapy.com. That's really easy. Or liveconferences.com or treatment to go, which forwards and ends up at live conferences. So Pretty cool, but my websites are old. I'm just saying we've been working for over two years to redo them. Yes. This is a big project because yes. I have over a hundred thousand people kind of in the system yeah. and I want to like move everybody. So yes. it's taken a while, but they will be new soon. I promise. Okay. People can find you on social media too, right? Like Instagram, of course. Yeah. YouTube, Facebook, right? Do you have, yes. um, what would they look, what would they look for? Would it be exploring hand therapy? I'm pretty sure it is for Facebook exploring hand therapy or hand therapy and, and, and the same Instagram. for the Instagram is exploring hand therapy okay. and um well you don't I'm not going to put you on the spot you don't have to remember everything what I'm going to yeah. do in this YouTube video is I'm going to include your links down below awesome thank you in the description so people can find you easy all they have to do is go read the description they'll find out your website and how to find you all on social media so they can keep an eye on where you're going next that's wonderful. That's so awesome. All right, you. Susan. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you. See y'all later. Bye. Bye.